Positive moral values are important in our everyday lives. Apart from giving meaning and purpose to our lives, having good morals means you're able to channel your behavior towards a beneficial and fulfilling conduct everywhere you find yourself. Good evening and thank you for joining us on today's edition of The Eagle. My name is Aisha Gambari. With me on the program is Aisha Mohammed. Hi Aisha. Good evening and welcome to another exciting week of the program. EFCC will get you anywhere, anytime. Welcome back. On today's edition of the program, we shall be taking a look at value reorientation as a possible weapon to check corruption. We will also bring you a report on the proceedings in the ongoing trial of former Chief of Defense Staff, Alex Badi, retired. The Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, has again been called upon to remain dogged and vigorously pursue its mandate aimed at having a corrupt-free society in Nigeria. All this will come your way after this timeout. Please stay tuned. My name is Elijah Mohammed. I am the Minister of Information and Culture. Uh, my message to Nigerians is that we should treat corruption the same way we treat cancer. In other words, we should wage war against corruption. If we do not wage war against corruption, we will lose everything. We will not be able to develop, we will not be able to provide for the people, we will not be able to secure our country. Glad to have you back. When you live your life according to moral values that are based on honesty, compassion, courage, modesty, and forgiveness, then you can also form positive bonds with other people. In this report, we'll take a look at value reorientation as a tool in fighting corruption. Kamila Gebi brings us more. According to an online article by essaylibrary.com, incorporating the moral value of honesty in your life makes you trustworthy. You will have a clear conscience because you can respect yourself. The people that you come into contact with will be able to count on you to be fair and sincere. Your integrity will allow you to advance in both your personal and professional life. There are more opportunities for you to fully experience life when you are an honest person. The issue of integrity brings us to the menace of corruption. A lot of Nigerians are no longer concerned about their integrity, which is evident in the way and manner public funds is being looted for private gains. Corruption, as many would say, is endemic in Nigeria. Everywhere you go, the menace stares you in the face, from bad roads to poor utility supply and unemployment. Poverty is also as a result of corruption because funds meant for developmental purposes have been diverted for personal gains. The government had since recognized these many problems and so established various agencies to combat corruption, some of which are the Independent Corrupt Practices and Other Related Offenses Commission, ICPC, the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, and the Code of Conduct Bureau, CCB, amongst others, with each having its separate laws. Apart from the laws enacted to fight corruption, can value reorientation be a tool in checking the spread of corruption? The Eagle team went on the streets of Abuja to sample people's opinion on this. Some of the respondents have this to say. The parents 
should teach their children the right thing. First of all, when they send their children to school, they should let them know that they should study and pass their exams by themselves. That whatever they do, they have to, they have to earn it on merit. Because I believe some parents are the ones that allow their children to go into all these corrupt practices, malpractices. They even pay the teachers, you know, buy question papers to allow these children to move further, to move to the next level. And these children, they are assimilating all these things and they know that their parents are doing this for them and they can continue with it because what your parents are doing and you are doing it, nobody will caution you about it. Uh, what I see in these things uh, is all about the family, parents. It's the way you brought up your children that will, they, will, they, will, they will also move elsewhere, outside. Uh, we parents, we need to impact some things in our children. You, you need to teach them before any other thing. You're supposed to be the teacher, the real teacher. You have to teach your children what to do and what... You have to educate them to know the bad and the good thing in our country. I am suggesting that we will start from home. Because home is the beginning of the whole thing. If you have a good family value, you will not be involved in the violence. You will not be involved in stealing. But because we have lost our family value, that is why Nigeria is going the way they are going. Just let's take for instance, in UNN, there is a child who the friends ask him to join an association. They call it one name. But the child came home and told the father, say, my friend asked me to join one association called the court. But the father, because the child was so close to the father, that was why he's able to disclose to the father. I am now advocating that parents should be close to their children and have time for them. The beginning of the whole discussion in this country started from home because a lot of parents are not at home. They don't know who's associated with their children. They don't know how they go out and how they come in. They don't even know how they eat because they are looking for material things. They need an orientation from the family, reorientation, and to educate them values, spiritual values, not ordinary uh, moral values alone, spiritual values. And when they know what it takes for a man and a woman to stay as one centered on God, then their lifestyle will change. They will now think of God first. And when they are thinking of God, they will not be corrupted in their heart. Another thing for this corruption of a thing, if you teach your children how to struggle, how to just don't look, don't relent, don't uh, don't look what other people are doing that is bad. Just focus attention on what you are doing. Teaching children how to struggle. Maybe after education, they will learn, they will do other things to at least to keep life going. The, the children will not look back. They will know that maybe after secondary school education, either you learn trade or you learn how to, how tra you learn how to sew machine or carpentry work or other things. Be contented with what they have children will follow suit. But a situation where you parents are not doing anything, tomorrow you bring this, you bring this one, bring, children will ask questions. Daddy or mommy, where? You say, don't worry. You have to tell your children where you are getting all those things. It's from my, my shop. It's from uh, this, my workshop. It's from this way. Or from a mechanic that uh, we get this one. Children will know that they will have to struggle, fight, learn things, so that tomorrow they will be okay. I think we are the role model to our children. It starts from the mother. Understand? You as a mother, you have to present yourself in a way that the child will not regret it in life. You understand? You inculcate things in the child that are positive. You don't you don't fight you don't fight in your child's presence, you understand? There are some things you don't say, like making call, you begin to lie. And your child is there watching. Before you know it, he sees us as a normal thing. The young people, they often say, are the future of the world. The future of our country depends on the moral values imparted to them when they are young. Children have an immense power of absorption. 
The young people they often say are the future of the world. The future of our country depends on the moral values imparted to them when they are young. Children have an immense power of observation and their feelings are deep rooted. They always observe their parents at home and their teachers in school. For this reason, some respondents called on parents to be good examples to their wards. I think it should be a kind of general sensitization from the family to be taught to the children and then immediately they get to school because it starts even at the nursery level. You leave your own food, you go to take another person's food. That is corrupt practice. So at that level, it shouldn't be taught as a, as a course, but as a kind of uh, instilling values in children. And then for the general society, there should be massive um, awareness campaign about it because the some people that are indulged in corruption and corrupt practices may not even know that what they are doing is injurious to their own persons and the society as a whole. So the government should, through the arms already in place, bring out a you know, campaign that will sensitize people on the need to stay away from corrupt practices. The process of learning for a child is not magical. It is important that we instill a sound base of strong moral values into our children. In conclusion, moral values are extremely important for your overall well-being. Moral values provide a structure for your life. We should all work towards a better Nigeria by imbibing in good conduct and instilling discipline and good morals in our children. Honesty makes you respectable. Aisha, talking about value reorientation, I think that will go a long way to check the incidences of corruption. If we all know that the impact of our improper conduct has a negative effect on our lives as human beings, then people will begin to change. Oh yes, Aisha, I agree with you. That's very true. We have to imbibe the culture of doing the right thing at all times into our daily lives. And for me, I think it will be most beneficial if the younger generation will be the top priority here so they grow up knowing that their conduct can either make or mar the future of the country. Yes, I agree yeah. with you. Now, to quote matters. The Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, has presented another witness in the ongoing trial of al Haji Salalami U, as well governor of Jigawa State, who is being prosecuted by the commission on a 27-count charge bordering on abuse of office and money laundering before Justice Adeni Ademola of the Federal High Court, Maitama Abuja. Rolake Odofin Jolayemi reports. Lamido, who is being prosecuted alongside his two sons, Aminu and Mustafa, and two others, allegedly abused his position as governor between 2007 and 2015 by awarding contracts to companies where he had interest, using his two sons as fronts. The former governor was equally alleged to have collected kickbacks from contractors in the state, with the funds allegedly paid into accounts that were managed by his sons. The witness, Alaji Suraju Amadu, who testified as PW12 while being led in evidence by Chile Okoroma, counsel to the EFCC, told the court that he knew Lamido, his sons, and Aminu Wada Abubakar, the fourth defendant, very well. Amadu, who is the chief executive officer of Rauda Integrated Services Limited, denied executing any contracts in Jigawa State, aside the construction of a hospital, a staff quarters, as well as motorized conversion of boreholes to solar energy in Jigawa State. He further denied authorizing any other person to take decisions regarding the company on his behalf. It will be recalled that a witness, Joy Eason, had on February 10, 2016, presented to the court account opening packages and statements of account of Dan Tata and Sawe Construction Company, Interior Woodworks Limited, and Rauda Integrated Services Limited, which were admitted in evidence as exhibits. When shown the documents presented by Eason, Amadou denied knowledge of it and how they came to be. The witness father told the court that the documents he was shown were marked differently from his company's document. The prosecution counsel then presented invoices used in the execution of different contracts which noticeably had the same invoice number as exhibit. He also presented an invoice booklet with invoice numbers in ascending order which the witness identified as genuine documents for his own company. This booklet was admitted in evidence by the court. 
However, under cross-examination, Amadou stated that there were no financial transactions between him and the third defendant, Mustafa Sule Lamido, aside the sale of his prudent bank, now Sky Bank shares, valued at a total of 5,800,000 naira, and the purchase of a Honda Accord car from the defendant, valued at 2,400,000 naira. Joe Agbi, SAN, counsel to the Lamidos, however picked hole in Amadou's statements previously rendered to the EFCC on April 29, 2014 and August 4, 2015, where he alleged that the shares sold were inland bank shares totaling 10 million and the car purchased was at a sum of 2,500,000 naira. Attempts by the prosecution counsel to further clarify on the matter led to a technicality battle between the two counsels as the defense persists that the witness's testimony was not ambiguous. Both statements were tendered before the court and admitted as exhibits. Thereafter, Justice Ademola adjourned the matter to the next day for ruling on the issue of re-examination by the prosecution and for the hearing. In another development, the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, has arraigned the former head of service of the Federation, Stephen Orosai, before Justice Ola Sumbo Goodluck of a federal capital territory high court sitting in Meitama, Abuja. Orosai was arraigned on a two-count charge bordering on alleged diversion of 190 million naira. The former head of service was alleged to have abused his position as chairman of the presidential committee on the Financial Action Task Force by fraudulently obtaining said sum, which the EFCC insisted was part of a 240 million naira grant the committee received from the Central Bank of Nigeria. In the allegation, the anti-graft agency said the fund was paid into an access bank account that was operated by Oronsai without the knowledge of other members of the committee. Oronsai, however, pleaded not guilty when the charges were read to him. Counsel to the EFCC, O. Uket, then sought the court to remand Oronsai in prison custody pending trial. The defense counsel, Joe Agbi, SAN, who led three other senior advocates of Nigeria that entered appearance for the defendant, drew the attention of the court to the fact that the Chief Justice of Nigeria, CJN, had directed that criminal cases must be heard on a day-to-day -day basis, starting from the day of arraignment. He therefore urged the court to compel the EFCC to immediately open its case against his clients. In a short ruling, trial judge Justice Goodluck upheld Agbi's submission and ordered the prosecution to produce its witnesses for trial to commence immediately. With the sudden turn of events, Uket applied for a stand-down to enable him go and fish for some of the proposed witnesses, an application that was accordingly granted. At the resumed hearing, the prosecution presented its first witness, Ngnan Kakwa, an operative with the EFCC. Kakwa, while being led in evidence by Uket, gave a detailed account of how investigations into the activities of the committee revealed that Orosaye opened an account with Access Bank PLC in the name of the committee, into which he received 190 million naira being part of the grant from the CBN and converted it to personal use by investing the said sum in various fixed deposits. He said, and I quote, Through an inquiry at the Office of the Accountant General of the Federation, we discovered that the account opening was not authorized. End of quote. Agbi thereafter prayed the court to grant him permission to move his bail application and sought for an adjournment for him to cross-examine the witness. While moving the application, Agbi urged the court to grant Oronsaye bail on self-recognition, arguing that the defendant, being a former head of service of the Federation, does not have any intention to jump bail. Oronsaye, according to Agbi, already had his international passport in the custody of the Federal High Court Abuja, where he is being prosecuted by the EFCC on a 2 billion naira fraud. Opposing the bail application, however, Uket urged the court to consider the gravity of the offence, which according to him is punishable with 14 years imprisonment. He further argued that the decision of the Federal High Court on the other matter was not binding in the case. Justice Goodluck thereafter granted Oronsaye bail in the sum of 10 million naira and two sureties in the sum of 5 million naira each, both of which must be residents of Abuja. The sureties, according to the trial judge, must be at the level of directors in the civil service or government establishments, either serving or retired. While adjourning to March 24th, April 13th and 14th, 2016 for continuation of trial, the trial judge ordered that Oronsai's international passport be brought to her court in the event that the federal high court case was concluded earlier than the one before her. It will be recalled that Oronsai was arraigned by the EFCC on July 13, 2015, before a federal high court in Abuja, alongside his alleged accomplice, Osarenwe Afe, and a firm 
Frederick Hamilton and Global Services Limited on an amended 35 count criminal charge for his alleged complicity in a fraud of about 2 billion naira. Still on court reports, Justice Rita Ofili Ajumogobia has fixed May 9, 2016 for judgment in a case involving a former Director General of the Nigerian Maritime Administration and Safety Agency, NIMASA, Raymond Temisa Omaseye. Omaseye was arraigned before the court on a 27-count charge bordering on alleged contract variation, bid rigging and awarding contract above his approval limit. At the resumed hearing of the matter, the prosecution counsel Godwin Obla, SAN, and defense counsel E.D. Onyeke made their final addresses and adopted them before the court. Onyeke filed and served the court and the prosecution a written address and adopted it. He urged the court to dismiss the case against the former Nimasa boss on the grounds that the prosecution has not been able to prove its case beyond reasonable doubt. Obla also adopted his written address and expressed confidence that the 27-count charge against the defendant has been proved beyond all reasonable doubt and prayed the court to find the defendant guilty of all the charges. According to Obla, 25 counts of the charges preferred against Omasei dwelt on the approval of contracts above the threshold level and the other two counts dealt with bid rigging. He also said that contrary to the existing regulations, Contracts was awarded to a company that was the highest bidder and which was not even pre-qualified for the contract. After listening to all their submissions, Ajumogobia adjourned the matter till May 9, 2016 for judgment. Rolake Odofin, Jolaimi, reporting for The Eagle. The trial of former Chief of Defense Staff, Air Chief Marshal Alex S. Badi, retired before Justice Okon E. Abang of the Federal High Court Abuja has commenced the report. Bade, who was granted bail in the sum of 2 billion naira, is being prosecuted by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, alongside Ialikam Nigeria Limited on a 10-count charge bordering on money laundering, criminal breach of trust, and corruption to the tune of about 4 billion naira. In moving the application, Defense Counsel Samuel Zimiri, SAN, pleaded with the court to grant Bade, who was not in court, bail on self-recognition. He argued that the former CDS served Nigeria meritoriously for 35 years. He argued further that his client was, according to sections 35 and 36 of the 1999 Constitution, presumed innocent until proven guilty. His submission was in response to the argument of prosecuting counsel Rotimi Jacobs, SAN, that the offenses against Badi were very weighty and he might disappear in a bid to avoid the shame of facing trial so the severity of the offense should be looked at. Jacobs added that some of the witnesses who would be called to give evidence against him include some of his subordinates, and so, if granted bail, his presence will have an impact on them. The trial judge thereafter granted him bail in the sum of 2 billion naira with two sureties in like sum. The sureties, according to the judge, must have landed properties in Abuja, the certificates of occupancy which must be submitted to the chief registrar of the court. He ordered that the registrar must verify in writing the value of the assets from the relevant departments of the Federal Capital Territory Development Administration and the genuineness of their certificates. He also ordered that Bade's international passport and or official passport must be submitted to the registrar, including three years tax clearance certificates of the sureties, two passports each, and their proof of means to provide the amount attached to the bail. Cheers, cheers. <laughs> I got a telephone call. Every time I close my eyes, yes. I see dead people chasing me in my sleep. My Juva Magada. Is it possible for someone to become restless just because of his past? Nevertheless, unless you kill somebody dead, then the spirit will be haunted you. Hey! Was you all contractors? I embezzled all the money for the roads that are now dead traps, killing people every day. I approved the supplies of fake drugs. On pipe on water. I am the money. At the fear chief. You are supposed to fear fear for a special man that you don't develop EMCC. I chose to be doing the rule to jump into that people's money. EMCC. As soon as they are captured them. Threat to prison. Jail. 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 Ah. Are you there? Life are not just about acquire wealth. Making money. When other people are going to die of hunger and neglect. Be careful. EMCC I watch. EFCC will get you anywhere, anytime. With that segment, we'll wrap it up on this week's edition of The Eagle. 
But before we go, here are some of our major highlights. We brought you a report on value reorientation as a weapon to curb corruption. And the trial of former Chief of Defense Staff Alex Bade retired has commenced before Justice Okun E. Agbang of the Federal High Court Abuja. And that's it on the program. Please don't forget to send your feedback to us via the ego at ESCCNigeria.org. Please also like our page on Facebook.com forward slash official EFCC or search for us on Google Plus at official EFCC. You can also follow us on Twitter at official EFCC.com and to catch up with all our programs and other activities, please log on to YouTube.com forward slash official EFCC. My name is Aisha Mohammed. Good evening. And I'm Aisha Gambari. Don't forget to join us same time and on same station next week. God bless Nigeria.